Um, I'll take school facts for 800, Alex. This is the most useless class that a person could take in school. Oh, oh man. What is... poetry? I'm sorry, Jeff, but the correct answer is all of them. They're all useless. In my first video, I didn't have enough time to say this, but I hate it when people are cool with their teachers. I understand that some teachers are more laid back than others, and sometimes they'll ask a class, so how was everyone's weekend? Then if you want to talk about something or have important news, then you can share it. My dog died! Haha, <laughs> yeah, they do that. But there is a line and you shouldn't cross it. Don't talk to your teacher just to talk to them during class. I don't know how much of a problem this is in other places of the world, but sometimes there would be kids in my class that would say, Hey Susan, how was your daughter's dance recital? Did you remember all of her moves? I saw the video you posted on Facebook. It looked like she was having a fun time. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Maybe I wouldn't have been a good teacher. Before I tell you about my poetry teacher, I need to tell you about the preparatory school I went to so you can better understand where I'm coming from. So I went to a preparatory school in ninth grade, and first off, what is a preparatory school? Google says it's a private school that prepares students for college. Now hearing that definition, you might think, wait, don't all schools prepare students for college? Isn't that a school's job? And you might think that a preparatory school is more fancy and made out of marble and all the kids come from rich families. <laughs> No. What it means is that the schools get little government funding and parents have to pay for desks and the teacher's salary. I know different private schools will vary depending on how rich the parents are. I'm sure that school made out of marble exists somewhere, but the preparatory school I went to was relatively worse than a normal public school. The school I went to didn't even have desks. They had fold-up tables and the chairs were fold-up too. How did they- Oh. Well, now I know where all the budget went. The main difference between a public school and a prep school is that a prep school is smaller and there's a uniform and there's lockers. So why did my twin sister and I attend a preparatory school? Because twins have superpowers and we need to go to a special school to enhance our abilities. Nah, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. That'd be cool though. We went because when we were starting our freshman year, our older brother was a senior and he was already attending this preparatory school and my mom didn't want to, have to drive to two high schools to pick us up. We already had a carpool in place. You can't just mess with the carpool. And me and my sister didn't know what to expect expect from a public high school. We've never been. We thought we'd get bullied or something. Boy, I feel like picking on someone today. <laughs> yeah, sure, we can go to a prep school. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Well, the carpool we had made it so we would arrive at the school super early before everyone else, and we'd be picked up from the school super late. And also, because it was a prep school, they gave out a stupid amount of homework. I remember breaking up the homework into pieces, like, okay, I can do the geometry while I'm waiting for school to start, the biology homework I can do during geometry class, and I have choir after lunch so I can just do this during lunch. Ah, look at me being responsible. I have a little sister who just finished her freshman year in a public high school and she thinks it was so hard. Oh, you thought your ninth grade was hard? Try doing twice the amount of homework and wear the same pants every day. So now the only question remaining is, why did my older brother go to a prep school in the first place? Bro, why did you go to a prep school in the first place? IDK just decided to. Just felt like I should. My mom reads my scripts and she told me that he went to a prep school because one of his friends said that there were cute girls at the school, so he decided to stay there for four years. Okay, now let's talk about my poetry teacher. I'll call him Mr. Poe, because that's short for Poe. A tree. Poetry wasn't even an elective class. Every freshman was required to take it. And surprisingly, poetry was only the second most useless class you took at the school. The sophomores took a class on Latin. You know, that dead language that no one speaks. So Mr. Poe, I don't want to judge him too hard. I don't know how he was like outside of school, but just picking up the vibes I got from him as a 14 year old, I think he was depressed. I mean, to be fair, anyone who likes poetry probably has something wrong in their head. But Mr. Poe just seemed sad all the time. Every single day he would start the class by saying, It's the best day ever. Which, if you think about it, saying that every day only means that the days are going to get better and better, which is sort of poetic. But I think Mr. Poe was lying to himself. Also, Mr. Poe really liked anacondas. I mean, snakes. He really liked snakes. Sometimes he would go off on tangents talking about snakes. Royal pythons, also called American ball python, got their name because they turned into a ball when they get nervous. Also, did you know that snakes have to... Never mind. Sometimes in class we'd be analyzing poetry, and Mr. Poe told us that every single word in a poem was important. The poet didn't have to use the word the, but they did. What did they mean? Sometimes we would spend days analyzing a single poem, taking notes and talking about what we thought the poet meant. One time a poem we were reading had someone talking, so there were quotation marks at the start of the sentence, but there weren't quotation marks at the end. The poet forgot to put end quotes. I remember noticing it and thinking, aha, 
A clue! Mr. Poe, I just made a breaking discovery. There's no end quotes here, meaning that the whole rest of this poem is told by this character. And Mr. Poe said, oh no, that's just a typo. Well, frickin', why am I perfectly nitpicking this piece when the poet purposely put poor punctuation in his poems? Pterodactyl! This is gonna sound off topic, but do you guys know what lateral thinking puzzles are? Lateral thinking puzzles are sort of like riddles, but more stupid. You're given a strange situation with little information, and you have to ask the person who told you the puzzle yes or no questions to get the answer. My favorite lateral thinking puzzle is this because it's so stupid. A man goes into a restaurant, orders albatross, eats one bite, and then jumps off a bridge. Why? Now normally, if we were playing legitly, you would ask me yes or no questions like, was the man in a relationship? And I would answer them saying, well, not anymore. The explanation is this, I'm not going to read it out because it's super long and complicated, but you can read it if you want. Well, Mr. Poe also liked to tell these lateral thinking puzzles, but his solutions were more... dumber. One of the puzzles he told the class was, you're trapped in a restaurant, how do you get out? Now, I can think of like five solutions right off the top of my head. Okay, through the door, through a window, use a crowbar if it's locked. There's probably a sharp knife to cut through a wall, or you can dig a hole under everything with a spoon. But it was actually none of those answers. So, how do you get out of a restaurant you're trapped in? You get an education. Okay, let me explain. You're trapped in a restaurant because you're a waiter, that's your job. And to get out of the restaurant, you need to get a good education so you can get a better job. Kind of like how I was able to quit my job in the food industry by getting an education. It's funny because he dropped out of college. So the class got the answer to that riddle, but Mr. Poe told us another riddle and we never figured that one out. And that riddle is, anyone can dig a ditch, but it takes a real man to blank. Given that the answer to the first riddle was education, the answer to this could be anything. I really wanted to know the answer to this riddle, so I googled it hoping that Mr. Poe just stole it from the internet, and I found this song, anyone can dig a hole close enough to a ditch, but it takes a real man to call it home. Which sounds poetic enough, let's see if the song gives us any more clues. Mr. Poe, I didn't know you were into this sort of stuff. So I wish I could give you the answer, but I don't have one. Feel free to guess what you think the answer is and give your reasoning in the comments. That'll be fun to read. But I will say the answer that I did come up with that I think makes the most sense. Anyone can dig a ditch, but it takes a real man to hide the body.